I mean, if you're going to a particular audience and it's the, you know, you're, for instance, with uh, Jimmy Two Shoes, we're trying to um, promote a, 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 a television series which is an animated um, and promote a downloadable game. So the most obvious um, format there was going to be um, a Flash game. In other, um, other projects, you're looking at if you want to extend the, um, the experience online, perhaps it may be, um, it may be video where you're going to tell a story that is um, additional to the original um, story that's being aired. Um, I don't believe that it's the... Um, when broadcasters first got into doing online, all they did was they, they basically put what they had online and said, that's enough, or a snippet or a clip, because they realised people were consuming their product anyway. They might as well have them coming, their eyeballs coming to their side to do it. But it's not necessarily the best way to uh, promote a series. But it, it, a lot of people, if they're, going, uh, if they're watching a show they love um, on air, and they, they, they go to online, they normally want to find out more. They want to get a more enriched experience. They want to interact with the, the characters, perhaps. They want to learn the backstory. They want to learn more. Perhaps they do want to play a game. Um, maybe they do want to uh, follow online. If you're, uh, if you're promoting the series, well then yeah, maybe Mobisodes is a good idea that gets, uh, gets the interest out there in quick downloadable snippets. There's no quick answer to any, um, to any one um, solution or any one show. Everyone's going to have their own unique uh, way of promoting that particular piece of material. And sometimes it's going to be a combination of all three. That's the beauty of interactive in, um, when you connect it to a broadcast element, is because you can continue to tell the story in a much more engaging and effective way beyond what you could do in traditional broadcasting. In traditional broadcasting, you could do it in snippets with a commercial, then more snippets, and then a commercial. And now you can completely engage the user in so many different ways, which is why I personally believe we're going to have, we're, we're moving towards us um, telling the story across. Uh, it's not going to, it's going to be multi-platform, but it's going to be a singular story. And it's just the way we engage with that story is going to change and become much more interactive as time goes on. I don't think we're going to loop, loop, lose broadcast in any way, but I do think um, broadcast is going to transition into the point where they understand that this is now a single, uh, there may be different devices for, for accessing their content, but really it's becoming a singular platform. And I think that next f five to ten years is going to show that. And I think broadcast is going to wake up to it. So how do you see, what is the viable business model for those who are involved in new media production? Oh, that's a huge huge question right now and it's one of the biggest things. I go to many events and the, always the biggest question is how do we monetize this? Because um, you, you, they can't even measure it properly as far as how, uh, you speak to Comscore, Comscore they, can't, they, they, they haven't figured out how to measure it yet. Um, Nielsen um, hasn't figured out to, how to measure it correctly yet. And there's only two ways to, to pay for this, either you um, pay for it yourself or you get someone to pay for it, a sponsor, an advertiser. And advertisers aren't 100 percent committed to uh, the online medium as far as being a way to promote their products, unless it's the traditional banner ads. And they, we see a lot of the advert games because we work on that side of the, the the coin as well. We work with advertisers. Half of our business base is working with um, advertisers to promote their brand, their clients' brands online. But still, we're looking at the traditional type mediums. It's only now where they're starting to think a little bit more about other. Um, ways they can push their product um, through social networking, through um, web, through mobile. I mean, that's one of the reasons we started working with the mobile platform, the iPhone, because it's a singular distribution center. And it, it, because, that, uh, because it exists in that way, advertisers are starting to have an interest in that platform. That's why we're, developing, we're working right now developing a, uh, Facebook apps, because advertisers are really, now this is a way to get to a targeted audience. A year ago, we couldn't have that conversation, so it was very difficult. Um, I mean, the short answer is nobody knows, but we're experimenting and, and trying to find ways to make it pay in, in such a way that it's a sustainable model. Everybody can make, you know, everyone can sort of throw the dart and hit the bullseye, um, you know, with their eyes shut, which is what, what they're doing, and every now and again you hear of a, uh, a darling that does fantastic Twitter. It, it's a, a brilliant idea. Um, is it, and it's got a lot of venture capital behind it, it's very well funded, but is it making any money? No. Is Facebook making any money? No. Oh, they just started. 
Yeah, but yeah. well, compared to what their um, their, their um, share prices are, um, or what the value of the company is. No, I mean it's been valued now at I think um, billions of dollars, and uh, is is it making billions of dollars on a revenue basis? No. So it's uh, the interest is becoming the interest is coming, but it's not there yet. So we're you know we're all looking for the way to make that you know that almighty dollar, which is why we're working with our um, developing our own, own IP for the iPhone platform and for online as well. We've traditionally been a service shop, and we still we still service the broadcast industry. We still service the uh, advertising industry, but we also have a separate arm now, which is developing its own intellectual property to push out and, and break away from that service model. It's a slow process, but we're doing it. So what do you, what do you recommend uh, for new media producers how to get the target audience? That's, I think, a very challenging thing. Well, I think you've got to study. You've got to, you've got to, you've, you really have to um, research your target audience. There's no good just saying, okay, well, I want to hit this particular demographic, and I'm going to throw something out because I think this is cool. You've got to look at what your target audience is looking at. You know where their interest lies, and um, it, it's not hard to find that. You, and you have to engage them, and you've got to provide value added because, especially a younger demographic. If you've got a younger demographic that is uh, that's internet savvy, that uh, knows what it's you know it's looking for, they can tell if they're being pitched to. They can tell if they're being sold. What they are looking for in in a world where we're giving it away. I, I mean, anything you could. There's nothing that you could purchase online that you that you could purchase in a store that's a, that's a media based that you can't get online somewhere for free, and you, that's what you're competing against. And I mean, it, um, you know, if any any television show, whether it's ge uh, geolocked or anything else, someone will be give you a way to get that content. So the way is to create an engaging platform, um, an engaging idea that's going to speak to it directly to that particular audience and provide value added. So you're not just trying to sell them something, you're actually giving them something. And I think that's where, that's when you're going to get the eyeballs, that's when you're going to get the interest in your particular project. So you've got to look outside of, you know, um, you've got to look outside of the core of what you're doing and look for value added that's going to give them more. I think it's also important to make it a complete package when producers create um, TV-based properties, whatever they might be. It needs to be the online component needs to be sort of a like if you look at Lost Experience for example it was a great success but they basically um, they stopped it like it was going well for first season and then it kind of fizzled basically I think now it's important for somebody to kind of pick up uh, where they left off and essentially create something that would be alive. Uh, as long as the property is alive and essentially just be an extension of it and be a valued um, element that people can, you know, they, they watch the show or whatever uh, and they go online and participate in some way. So now it's not just a, a sort of a one-way stream, it's something where it, it would be great for somebody to create um, a sort of a... Uh, an experience where users can really influence what's going, you know, what's happening or sort of a, somehow be engaged essentially in what's happening on screen rather than just sitting and passively absorbing what's being thrown at them. So it would be interesting to see if somebody can find a way to really kind of capture that.